Hello and welcome to the Sam Mobile Podcast. I'm your host, Ben from Sam Mobile. And this show pretty much gives you all the weekly and news and fresh info in the world of Samsung. And it's pretty much just to give you an opportunity to catch up with all the hot topics all brought to you from SamMobile.com as well as our video platform on Sam Mobile TV across all socials. And yeah, it's an exciting one, man. It's our first podcast, so I'm trying not to overthink it too much. Have a bit of fun with it. Relax, enjoy. And yeah, come around. This is going to be a good one, no doubt. You know, first I'm going to start and ask, you know, how have I been? I've been all right. I've been good. I've been good. Just a little bit about myself, our audio listeners as well. I'm sure our video listeners would have seen us do something similar of our live streams, but we're now changing it to a podcast, still having the same vibe, more relaxed, but yeah, pretty much picking the hottest topics in the world of Samsung throughout the week and yeah, sharing it through sammobile.com as well as, you know, certain hot topics that we've had experience with. And yeah, we're starting to see that with today's show, you're going to realize that a lot of the products that's been coming up from CES are now becoming official and going up for pre-order. And one of the main ones that we're going to really talk about, because it's really caught attention again, is the Smart Monitor M8. We first saw this in CES. We're going to talk about it because it has gone on pre-order. And also, we're going to be discussing things to do with what we've done in the review. We've got the Galaxy Tab SA Ultra. We're going to see how that has been and what our thoughts are. We're going to share it because I had the pleasure of reviewing it, of course. That video review did go live on SamMobile.com. And um, also talk about the Galaxy A53. Finally, the new A series for this generation for this year is definitely there. And we've got a written review on it. Still waiting to do my video reviews since I haven't got my review unit here in the UK. But yeah, our written reviews up because we've got a slew of different writers that get onto it. And yeah, just going to share my thoughts on it and see how it goes. And we're going to talk about certain aspects of it when it comes to the Exynos 1280 chipset. So yeah, we've got a lot to get through. And for our third podcast, first, I can't even speak, for our first podcast, yeah, you know what? I'm excited, man. So you know what? Let's get into it. Now we'll dive straight in to what is pretty much been going on. And the first quarter of 2022, Samsung has been busy. And you know, from the jump, man, we were at CES Consumer Electronics Show 2022, it was back in person, and we saw a lot of products and we posted a lot of videos and a lot of articles, obviously on sammobile.com, definitely visit us over there. Sammobile TV on YouTube. Um, I had the pleasure, that was my first CES and it was kind of class to CES like, but you know what? It was still busy nonetheless. It was still busy nonetheless. There was a lot going on. There was a lot happening. And I'm glad I was able to do it. And we saw a lot of display tech from Samsung in regards to, you know, whether it's computers, um, TVs, you know, we, we saw a lot from Samsung Electronics as well as Samsung Display themselves, which was really, really good to see. And um, the Smart Monitor M8 was definitely one of them where it was a Smart Monitor. I, I think this follows up from the M5 and the M7. And um, it's now on pre-order. <laughs> it's now on pre-order on the US website. And um, it's caught a lot of attention again because it looks very, very familiar to another competition's product, but it is smarter in its own way. And it does take a different approach. And um, yeah, we'll pretty much dive into it. All the news and things that have been brought to you is pretty much all from SamMobile.com throughout the week. So for our audio listeners, definitely visit us at SamMobile.com. Our video listeners, you're going to be able to see me put up on the screen. But yeah, I'm going to read it through the article and pretty much just dive in and see how that has been going with this Smart Monitor M8 finally going live. So this article here went live on the 28th of March this week. And this was by our resident, Asif, one of our writers as well. So shout out to you, Asif, for making this happen. We're going to flow with it again. Bear with me. It is our first podcast and it is my first official podcast. I'm over last stream when I get into it. But you know what? We'll try and make it as fun as engaging for you. So we've got the header titan. Header, header titan. <laughs> we've got a header title saying, Samsung's new monitor is inspired by Apple, but it's smarter. Okay. That's a big one. That's a big one. I'm going to go through the article, read it. Then I'll do my rebuttal, share my opinions and thoughts on it. Because again, I got to see it in person when I was at CES. So that will give me a bit more um, insight and whatnot. So we'll put this article in the description so you can check it out. But yeah, it says Samsung Smart Monitor M8, the successor to the company's successful Smart Monitor M5 and M7 went up for pre-order today in the USA. And it says the monitor looks heavily inspired by Apple's 
iMac, the M1 version in terms of the design, the shape of the stand, and even the color options. Now, that's one thing that I did ask about, but there was no news, but it looks like there are different color options. However, Samsung's one of is quite affordable, practical, and smarter than Apple's. Ooh, that's a big statement still. That's a very, very big statement to make. Right, second line paragraph. It says the assembly, the, the resemblance is uncanny, but Samsung's monitor is more practical. All right, let's see. It comes in four colors, daylight blue, spring green, sunset pink, and warm white. Man, this, I always say like, who, who comes up with these colors? Like the names. <laughs> right, it says, however, inspired by Apple's iMac blue, green, pink, and silver variants. However, Samsung's monitor has thinner bezels all around, and it's magnetic when it comes to the webcam, webcam, which is one thing I remember being removable, making it more pleasing to look at while it's, you know, more practical. And even comes with a tilt and height adjusted stand. Yeah, yeah that's good. So for my audio listeners, you won't really be seeing it visually, but yeah, it's um, it, it, does, it does resemble, it does kind of match pound for pound, especially the green, pink, and the blue color. Obviously the warm white, it's slightly different to the purple that they've got there. It says, okay, so next one, it says, it's also quite affordable and smart. All right. So coming, coming to the feature and the price setting, it is a 32 inch smart monitor M8 and it does have a 4K QLED display with 400 nits of peak brightness, 99% sRGB for the color gamut. And it's got 1.07 billion colors, HR10 plus, 60 Hertz refresh rate, and it costs $729 in the US. In comparison, the Apple Studio display has a 27 inch screen with a 5k resolution 600 nits of peak brightness and it's got the same billion um point 1.0 um seven i'm trying to say that really fast zero billion colors a 60 hertz refresh rate and it lacks any form of hdr playback and compatibility um the smart monitor m8 has a bigger display and slightly lower resolution but it also it's also 870 dollars cheaper than the apple studio display yeah that is true and you can buy a book 2 360 or a MacBook Air M1 with the remaining money. Well, that's true. Plus, it runs Samsung's Tizen OS. Very interesting there, which means that it can run all the popular audio and video streaming apps without the need of a separate computer or media streaming um, device. Um, it also even has a built-in 2.2 channel speakers. Yep, I remember that. And a 4HD webcam. Great. Um, it says that it fits well within the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> okay. And it says the Smart Monitor M8 has two USB-C ports one of which supports a 65 watt power delivery charging. And the second one is there. And it says it features the AirPlay 2 for wireless screen mirroring and also multimedia streaming from the iPhone and the iPad. Additional features include the Wi-Fi 5, as well as the Bluetooth 4.2, um, Amazon Alexa, Bigsby, SmartThings, and Samsung Health. Um, the design of it is inspired by the 24 inch Mac. Yep, by the looks of it, Samsung ensures that it's you know affordable and easier to use. It can double up as a smart TV and it fits well within the Apple ecosystem. Thanks to features like AirPlay 2, Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, um, and USB-C ports for power delivery. And also it's 900 pounds or $900 cheaper um, than the studio display. But yeah, we, 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 we did coverage on this. We did coverage on this. We did coverage on this. If we go to sammobile.com, we go to, pre, um, we've got our CES 2022 says view, full playlist, um, and we've got a smart monitor M8 right there. So we've got it right, right there. So we 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 managed to get hands on with it. I'm gonna full screen it very quickly. So for my um you know video um video watches that you can see it there. We 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 had hands on with it, and it's it's very, very nice. It's very, very nice. So we've got full details on it in terms of what was given to us and um everything that's pretty much been said in the article, it looks pretty much exactly what we expected it to be and look like from what we're seeing right now. So I'll share my thoughts on it. It's a, it's a very, it's a very interesting product. It's a very interesting product. It's obviously clearly something that Samsung have done before. They've done that before. Um, and it's a follow-up of the M5 and the M7. So it's, it's an interesting product. Uh, you've got things like, you know, remote features and Google Duo built in where you can obviously with the remote features, you can control, um, another PC through it. So you don't actually need a PC there. It's a very, very nice product. It's a very interesting product. And I think definitely the colors do mirror it, but it is a, it is a different product in terms of comparing it to the studio display. 
you know, because this doesn't really have like full size HDMI. It's got micro HDMI. You've got USB-C for power delivery as well as obviously connecting as well. It's more of almost like, and also it, it, it comes with a remote. It comes with a remote, just like what you would do with a TV. It's almost like how you would want your TV to be as a monitor, right? It's almost that. It's almost like how you'd want your TV to be if it was a monitor. And it's interesting because stuff like having remote support is something I've always wanted on monitors. And I just don't know why monitors don't do that enough. And you're always having to depend on the knob and the on-screen display, all that stuff, right? So... It's 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 almost like how you would want your PC monitor to be like a TV in a sense. With the Tizen OS working on it, with Samsung TV Plus, with um, you know, all the smart features that's in there as well. It's a very, very interesting product in that sense, but it is different to what you would expect to see from like a you know, like a normal how, how can I put it? It's, it's different to like a normal monitor that you would expect to see on a, TV, uh, on a on a computer when you're using it, you know? It's very, very niche and it's very specialized. It's almost like a smart monitor in that sense, you know, not necessarily like a monitor dedicated to content creation as such, even though you can use it, but it's just, it's just a very interesting product. It's nice. Uh, I think it's, I think the colors, obviously, but I don't know what's of it. <laughs> You know, it does gain a lot of inspiration from what we saw with the M1 map, but it is at least it's a lot bigger in terms of screen real estate rather than 24 inches or 27 inches like you find on the studio display. 32 inches is a nice canvas size as well. You know, so it's, it's going to be a lot more inversive, uh, Im inversive, immersive. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's a much slimmer form factor as well and it's height adjustable. So it's a good look. It's a good look. It's a good look. I think that always the question is like, would I buy it? Is it a product that I would buy? No, no, it's it's not. It's not a product I would necessarily buy. But you see, uh, uh, when I was there, one of the trainers, one of the trainers on the CS show floor pretty much walks me through a scenario with their M7, the model before, where they said that the way their room had been laid out and whatnot, they actually bought one of the M7s for um, their kid's room to use and obviously they can actually stream a full pc from where their desktop is to that because it's got the remote sharing feature and i said you know what that's quite an interesting way to approach it i never thought about it in that sense i never thought about it in that way and um yeah it's 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 quite an interesting way to think about it it's a i think the plus point is the price point the price point is very very appealing it does look good. It does look like a lifestyle kind of furniture product, especially with the colors. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I would like to see how the response would be in terms of obviously once this period has gone live, how many people adopt to it? You know, because it is in its own way, a standalone product. It doesn't need to work with anything else, especially with the Tizen always running in there and having all that access to, you know, the smart TV features, Google Draw built in, you know, if you want to do remote desktoping, you can. So yeah, it's a very interesting take. It's a very interesting take, but it's, I'm glad to be seeing some of the CES products coming because I'll be honest with you, man, from the jump, from the 3rd of January this year, Samsung have been going hard. They've been, they've been busy at it, man. And not just Samsung Electronics, Samsung Display, and obviously we're seeing a lot of the QD display or QD OLED stuff coming out now, which we're going to talk about another time because we've got the topic set for the for this podcast already. So we don't want to deviate. We don't want to go too far in, especially for our first one. But I don't know, man, let us know your thoughts. You know, what what would you be interested in something like the Smart Money M8? Hmm, very interesting take. All right, so if you've been following the news, man, we know now finally the Galaxy A series is now out for 2022. And it's a bit of a weird one because region by region, it's different models that have come out. But I guess across the board, it is the Galaxy A53 that is the main star of the show. Then you've got the A33, um, A 
Um, there is the A13 and also the A23 that I've been seeing pop up with different, you know, regions as well. And obviously the A73, but the A73 is weirdly scarce in some weird way. And I mean, at the time of this recording of this video podcast, um, the A53 is meant to be coming out on the 1st of April. And as, I've, um, as I'm recording this, it's the 31st of March. So it should be technically coming out tomorrow. But the A33 is meant to be coming out on the 22nd of April. So there's a bit, there's a bit of separation in terms of what to expect on the release dates. And also the A73, we don't know. Um, it might be later, it might be May. It's it's a bit of a weird situation, but I think that's really just down to like the chip shortages, manufacturing challenges. We know what happened with the Galaxy S21 FE, right? So there's so many different factors to consider. But away from that, we had the pleasure or, you know, my, me being on the video side, I had the pleasure to get hands on with the A53 and the A33. Um, we posted our video up on Sam Mobile about it. And, um, you know, it's been it's been overall something that's a lot more confidence inspiring. Again, look, I'm going to do a hot take on this one, right? The subjective hot take. And this subjective hot take, let me tell you this. This is all just down to the fact that, ah, I did not have a good time with the A52, right? I didn't. I didn't. The build quality felt, you know, hollow. It felt like a toy. It didn't feel confidence inspiring. I didn't really like it. And the performance optimization was not that great to the point where, of course, they needed to bring out the A52S to really compensate for that, man. And that just made me feel some way. The only, I always say this, the only thing that saved the A52 for me in general was the camera performance. The camera all around for a mid-range phone at that price, you know, being able to do things like 4K, 30 frames a second on a selfie camera, on a rear camera, I think was brilliant. And, you know, stabilization was good. Dynamic range, clarity was good. Against some of the competition that I put against, man, yeah, it, 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 cleaned, it cleaned house. It cleaned house. It definitely cleaned house. So uh, it's, 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 uh, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one to see it. And with my hands-on impression, definitely, definitely, definitely. The build quality, the phone just felt more confidence-inspiring, even though it not having a charger in the box and not having um, a micro... No, no, the, the micro SD card slot is still there, but not having a headphone port is a shame. But you know what? It just felt more well-balanced and well-rounded. But when you do a quick hands-on where you've only got about 30 to 45 minutes with it, the impressions is not completely indicative, especially when it comes to something like performance. Now, like credit where credit's due, it's 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 more confidence inspiring. Five nanometer chip, it's the Exynos 1280, right? Um, this is something that is meant to give a bit more co um, confidence in terms of you know performance over long term, especially the fact that they've actually offered and they will be offering, which it still blows my mind because I wasn't expecting this. Like four years of OS version updates for the a series and that's crazy to to be able to do that you have to be confident in the performance but you see the next topic pretty much breaks down one aspect of it that you might just want to consider and wait if it's in regards to the performance of the a53 so this article here is by mr daniel daniel himself what's up what's up so we've got um that posted on sammobile.com this article went live yesterday as a time as, as of the time of this recording which is on the 30th of march and it says buying the galaxy a53 for gaming you might want to wait oh i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know obviously for my audio listeners i'm going to read this out to you this article so you can pretty much break down get our opinions and thoughts on it and yeah share what we think and what's going on here but for my video listeners and watchers, you're pretty much going to be able to see this article. And we highly recommend that you go check it out on sammobile.com as of the week that is commencing on the 28th of March. So what we have here is that the Galaxy A53 is here and it brings plenty of interesting features, even if most of them were already seen on the Galaxy A52 models from last year, which I mean, come on, man, that's the case, isn't it? In fact, um, the only truly new feature that the A53 brings is that new Exynos 1280 chipset, which has a built-in five nanometer process. That's what it's built on. It's touted to be Samsung's best for the segment, which, yeah, it does give me a bit of confidence. And it says, as we said in our um, review, the A53 isn't optimized very well for day-to-day -day use with random stuttering 
that we didn't see in any of the A52 models. Nah, I disagree. <laughs> uh, which were powered by the Snapdragon chips. Nah, <laughs> I did personally. Sorry to say. Maybe you're thinking about the A52s, but phew, nah. My A52 was, was a mess. That 750G, it didn't really do the work. But anyway, we move. And something we hope we get fixed in software updates when it comes to gaming. However, it actually is pretty good, at least in the games that were already compatible. All right, let's see. Next heading, it says the Samsung, um, the Exynos 1280 is brand new and developers are yet to update their games to support it. Okay, that's promising. Um, but what about the games that aren't compatible? Yes. Now, many of these at the moment, obviously, with the new processor and developers that are still in the process of updating their games to properly support it. And for that reason, if one of your priorities is gaming, then uh, you might have to wait. For example, at the time of this writing, again, this article went live on the 30th of March, 2020, if you're listening back to it at a legacy or later time. Call of Duty doesn't let you select any, graf any graphical presets above the medium setting. Mm, that's kind of a bummer. Um, if you decide to play the highest frame rate, you are actually just limited to low, <laughs> oh, whoa, low graphics for the preset. Damn, on a five ninety meter chipset. Oof. That is the fact that the Exynos twenty is um, Exynos twelve eighty is GPU is perfectly capable of running Call of Duty at high graphics settings. I would think so as well. As much as I'm not much of a mobile gamer, I kind of know specs, especially coming from like a PC gaming background. It's all down to the fact that devs haven't gotten around to releasing the necessary update. Uh, the same applies to many other games. Of course, there's a good reason for it. In fact, there are two. In addition to the fact that the Exynos 1280 is a brand new chip, the Galaxy A53 isn't even on sale in most markets yet. That is very true. That is very true. I did state that. So it's not surprising game developers, game, game developers aren't paying it any attention yet. Whew. But given the popularity of the Galaxy A series, that should change soon after the Galaxy A53 actually starts making its way into the hands of customers. And don't worry, we'll be keeping an eye out on the popular gaming titles run on the phone in the next couple of weeks and update the article if our findings do change. So if you decide to wait before buying the Galaxy A53, be sure to bookmark this page and come back on the lookout. Whew, that's a nice little string in there. Appreciate this one. Appreciate this one. And I mean, if we head over to SamMobile.com, like we said, we've done two videos on the Galaxy A53 already. Um, our initial hands-on and first look, more of a first look. And I mean, it looks promising. I have more confidence in this version compared to last year's model. And um, it, it looks like Samsung have really, really clocked, you know, how to do the mid-range phones well in that sense. So it's 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 interesting it's interesting again like i said these a series devices are pretty much have the same specs across the board from a53 a33 a73 which is good 590 meter across the board same amount of ram same amount of storage micro sd card support again i'm not really much of a mobile gamer in fact i'm not a mobile gamer right <laughs> you know on a phone at least i'm not so it's hard for me to really feel any way about it, but just judging from the fact that they've been able to put it on a 5.9 meter process and obviously the Mali GPU in there, that's really strong for mid-range um, phone in this class for Android. Yeah, I'm sure a couple of updates to with how mass, how much of a mass seller the A-series is, I don't see this to be a problem anytime soon. Again, if you look at the breakup in release cycle, the breakup in release cycle pretty much shows that, like I said, 1st of April, well, that's when you're going to be getting the A53 coming out. Don't know when the A73 is coming out. And obviously with the A33, that's going to be the 22nd of April. So I think that should help since they're all on the same platform. They all have 1080p displays. Um, and obviously the A53 is Infinity O at 120 hertz. And the A33 is um, Infinity U notch with 1080p Super AMOLED at 90 hertz. So it's... um. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I don't think this would be much of a problem that that anytime soon. I think this would just be easily fixed and we shouldn't really have a problem. So I, I guess wait. Um, how long are you gonna wait? If I put a time to it, maybe I don't think you'd be waiting any more than let's hope two weeks. Let's hope two weeks. It really depends on how quickly developers are on it, but 
if the developers are seeing that these phones are selling as they usually do as a mass seller, which they tend to, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe no more than two weeks, maybe within a week of launch, the minute they get it, they can just update the code, you know, and then we're good to go. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it, man. Um, I don't know how many of you are mobile gamers. And I think obviously it's a very popular thing in this day and age that we live in. Our smartphones are way more capable than they've ever been. So I know they are. I'm maybe not one of them because I like to just use my dedicated gaming consoles that I have around me to really enjoy gaming in that sense. But I mean, not to take it away, man, you got a five nanometer process in a mid-range chip in the UK, less than 400 pounds. Yeah, listen, get to town when it comes to certain games then. So we'll see how they get optimized. We'll keep you up, up to date. And yeah, let us know your thoughts on the A53 if you're looking to get it and if you're getting it for the reason of gaming as well. Yeah, but it's been an interesting start so far. So with that, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back and then we'll talk more about the Galaxy Tab SA Ultra. Don't go too far. We'll see you back very, very soon. Okay, we are back. Hopefully you didn't go too far. And yeah, we're pretty much just going to carry on and just get into the last segment of this podcast for this show. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And yeah, like I said, man, Samsung have been busy the first quarter of this year, man, with all the display tech that we saw in January, as well as obviously the Galaxy S21 FE. Straight into February, we saw the Galaxy S22 series, um, which, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been going really well. I've really, really enjoyed my favorite one, which is the Galaxy S22 plus, no doubt. Um, it's been action packed for Samsung. It's been action packed for Samsung, no doubt. And, um, the, the February launch of, of the Tab S8 series near enough, pretty much mirrored what was on the S22 series where you had the base Tab S8 with the TFT LCD display, Tab S8 plus, and then you've got the Tab S8 Ultra, which is what we have right here. Whoa, this behemoth of a boy. Yeah, Tab S8 Ultra, this giant of a kid. <laughs> and yeah, we've pretty much been using that. Well, I'd say me personally, I've been using it for, well, since the 9th of March. So came back from, came back from MWC. Once I came back from MWC, the first, the week after commencing, pretty much did the unboxing, started using it. And um, I have to say, I felt very out of touch. My last Android tablet was the Tab S3. Yeah, that was my last Android tablet. So I felt a bit out of touch because I didn't know where to start. So I kind of just had to go with the similar principle of how I treat a smartphone and kind of adapt to it. And we did the unboxing, did the initial setup, um, talked about it. And, and again, just to let you all know, our video listeners, as well as our audio listeners and watchers and whatnot, that we have posted a review on it. Our full experience review, um, you know, it's now live. Uh, it was live as of today, the last day of the month, last day of the quarter, 31st of March, 2022. And we're pretty much will put all our thoughts out there. But you know what? It's good to talk about it as well. You know, so expand a little while you have a bit more time and you're not too constrained to, you know, the words of a scripted review that you've got to put out there to match what's on um, going. And the, do you know the best way I can describe this tablet? The best way I can describe this tablet is that it's one of those products that is so good that regardless of how good it is and best in class it is, it still doesn't really make any sense. And I know that sounds a bit harsh. I know that sounds a bit harsh and that's not me trying to throw people off from getting it, right? Hey, you want it, you get it, right? You're going to enjoy it regardless. And it's a great product in that sense, right? I'm not going to go through the normal review of what I discussed. You watch the video, you listen to it, and you can pretty much get all the thoughts on that. But you see, this is where I say it makes less sense. In conclusion, this is a great product. But you see, when it's, <laughs> it's basically a laptop for a screen. It's almost a 15-inch screen, 14.6 inches, right? When it's that big... And that expensive, especially over a thousand pounds, depending on what model, whether you get the Wi-Fi only or the 5G model, you've got to commit. You can't, I don't feel like you can use this as a normal tablet, i.e. handheld. You know, it's as, as thin as they've done it, as light as they've made it, 
This is not a tablet to be used handheld. You have got to bare minimum use this with some form of kickstand and something that props it up in some way, right? Whether it's tilted up slightly, you know, whether it's tilted up slightly or, you know, completely tilted up, you know, you've got to use it with a kickstand because let me tell you, like in about 10 seconds, it just starts to feel too heavy. It really just starts to feel way, way, way too heavy, you know? And the problem is the kickstand book cover case accessory is about $350, £350, £400. Pound. Like, it's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. Look, off head, I don't know how much the Book 2 Pro 360 that we checked out in the MWC when we did the coverage on it, but... Honestly, once you get to that that price range, man, you have got to really, really want to commit to this type of tablet Android computing experience because, boy, as good as DeX is and as good as One UI 4.1 is, that really compensates for just how kind of still, unfortunately, luckluster Android is on a tablet, which you can only hope it gets fixed for Android 12L, but it's really also down to not just the foundation of how Android is built, but they need to somehow get these developers to get around doing proper dedicated tablet versions for Android apps properly, you know, with the correct aspect ratio, correct scaling, correct use of space. But, and, and this is nothing taken away from the Tab SA Ultra. It's a great device. This is the best in class Android tablet you're gonna get. And again, my full thoughts are in the review. So we highly recommend go on YouTube, subscribe to Sam Mobile TV, check it out there as well. But it's, if you're, again, the reason why, when we're in Spain, we were MWC when we got this and we purchased this. The reason why we didn't get accessories, is just they've been out of stock. They've been out of stock everywhere. They've seriously been out of stock everywhere. So it's that weird to get hold of the official um, book cover case with the keyboard and trackpad that gives you that proper experience, especially when you're using Index. It's hard to get hold of. It's really, really hard to get hold of. So it's not been, it's not been that easy to, it's okay. In a way, we're glad that we, we managed to review it from a, non-core accessory standpoint like if you're going with the mindset of you're wanting to use this without the keyboard cover in the case how is it going to be right it's a bit much it's a bit too much it's not that enjoyable it's really not that enjoyable if you're not going to use it with a case and here's another reason why the s pen i really i really wish that this was a Galaxy Note tab device, i.e. somewhere to store. I would, I would personally, in my personal opinion, I would take a slimmer S Pen for it to be stored away in a body because let me tell you this, this looks like an expensive replacement just waiting to happen. This, this right here. <laughs> this right here looks like an expensive replacement waiting to happen. Again, my audio listeners, you can't see it, but... Uh, unless you get the book cover case and a kickstand case where it has a storeway, you know, it looks like an expensive replacement waiting to happen. But I do appreciate that the S Pen comes included. It does charge at the back. It is Bluetooth. It is great to use in terms of the lower latency. Um, I wish the button was on the inner thumb rather than the outside for the index finger. Still feels off. Still not used to it. But I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it's a great product. It's a great product. And I mean, dare I say it, Samsung are gonna be the only ones to really push the limits. And um, with how it works in cohesion with the S22 Ultra, especially with S Pen support on both devices, you can use one S Pen. Obviously you've got to remember with the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you've got to take the S Pen out for it to work with another S Pen. But either way, you can cross use the S Pen, maybe use your Galaxy S22 Ultra S Pen with that while you're using your Galaxy S22. And there's obviously apps that allow you to use it as a canvas, as well as obviously menus on the other side. I mean, it's a great, it's a great, uh, it's just you, you have to commit. And my biggest issue is once I've committed to a tablet of that price with connectivity or 5G, for example, and the book cover case with the keyboard and trackpad, I'm in proper, proper laptop territory. And 
get to that point, I'm almost like, yo, I would rather have a full proper, you know, OS that gives me less of those limitations. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But to if you really want to commit to the, how can I best put it? If you want to commit to the best, if that matters to you, the best Android tablet experience, this is going to give it to you, but you have to commit. You have to make sure no less you get a kickstand case one that allows you to store the s pen away safely while it charges at the back because it only charges at the back yes you can store it magnetically at the front at the top sorry but it only charges at the back so that's something to consider right so that's where i'm that's why i'm in between i think it's just cross the border a little bit too much where the smaller tablets, if you make that into a small tablet kind of laptop experience replacement, the price is still so much more accessible that you don't feel the pinch too much that you're getting into that high-end laptop territory. You know, this just feels like it is. But it doesn't take away from me. It's a great, great tablet, great speakers, great display, um, in-display fingerprint sensor that works without the screen being on, great specs, even though it's slightly on the clock because of the slimmer profile and not being able to obviously cool it as efficiently. There's so much going for it. The S Pen is included. It's not an extra $130, pounds, $200 accessory that you need to get from straight away. You know, we did the charging test on it and it really, it really utilizes the 45 watt charging much, much, much better than we expected it. And although you don't get the charge in the box, which it's, it's still a bit salty, and it's not something that we we approve of at this price point, but it is the trend now. Sadly, we do recommend that you get an official Samsung 45 watt charger. You use this 45 watts for at least more than half of the charging cycles um, consistently. The battery life is good, especially the standby time. When I did the charging test video with light usage, I've not I've not charged it since we did the charging test video on the channel, which even then it quoted at 82 minutes to full charge it charged at least a good two three minutes quicker than that so i mean credit to it credit to it that 11 was was it eleven thousand two hundred milliamp hour battery i always get that muddled up in my head it seems to be really well optimized and it really does take advantage of the 45 watt charger unlike their flagship devices that support it as you saw and that's even with the new ep-t 4510 charger but that's our thoughts. That's our thoughts. I just kind of wanted to, you know, expand on why this this product just gives me the the sense and the feeling that you can make something so good, and regardless of how good it is, it still almost doesn't make sense. And to make it make more sense, you have to spend more. And when you spend more, you cross into a territory that also doesn't make sense. That makes you look at another product and think maybe that's better but then do I st you see that's the confusion but we highly recommend go on Sam Bar TV on YouTube check us out check the full experience with you um, and yeah check the other videos that we did the unboxing as well as the charging test video the full experience with you our thoughts and pretty much expanding on it right here but it's been it's been good it's been good I've enjoyed it I've enjoyed it and I would rather Samsung push the boundaries like they, what they do with the foldables and let's see let's see maybe android 12 oh will fix it and then one ui 4.1 can really really get the credit that it deserves with a base foundation on an android tablet experience especially with apps that can really do the job well yeah that's kind of our thoughts on the galaxy tab s8 ultra so yeah that is it in regards to the first sam mobile podcast it's been a fun one i've had in, i've had fun man it's been our first one straight to the point short and sweet and this should pretty much be available on all the podcast platforms and also the video watches as well on our youtube channel definitely check us out subscribe follow so you get all the notifications and we're going to try and keep this weekly for you because and you know the place to get all the latest news in the world of samsung daily weekly fresh off the press sam mode out sam, sam mode out <laughs> sam mobile.com without a doubt definitely subscribe to us follow us everywhere and we'll keep you up to date and yeah we'll catch you soon on another one stay blessed stay safe we'll see you again peace